through the fourth down stop your defense made to win the game for you tonight? Yeah, Jermaine Pratt. Uh, you know, and, and it's really all those guys, but uh, Jermaine, I thought that was very fitting because he's been a guy who's been all about taking the ball away all season. And he got the one earlier in the season against Minnesota. Um, he's done it multiple times. He's always a guy when we watch the tape, he's trying to punch the ball out, rake it out, whatever he's got to do. Um, so for him to get the pick on the last play of the game is really just fitting of what he's been all about and uh, finished it off for us the right way. Zach, what was the last 646 like for you when you guys went up by 10 and knew that the Raiders would probably make one last hard charge? Sure. They're a good team, you know, and so we, we knew they could move the ball. They had a ton of weapons. Their offensive line was playing really good. Um, so, again, we, we figured it was going to be tight there at the end, uh, but had confidence our guys would make plays, and, and uh, they, they sure enough did. Zach, what does it, what does it feel like to, uh, or how does it feel to have the first playoff one? Well, happy for the city. I, I think the city can finally exhale. I, I get that. Um, we haven't felt that pressure, I, I'll be quite honest. Me, maybe more so than the players, because I'm out and about more in the off season and, and, and talk to people who have been here a long time. But I don't think the players ever felt that. So I'm just really, really happy for, for the city of Cincinnati and that they get a chance to enjoy this. And, and now just exhale and, and enjoy the ride here, because we're not done yet. Yeah. It's always part of the game plan to target Jamar Chase. Um, but but it's not, it was never forced. You know, there wasn't one ball that was forced there. There's always options, and um, he just made the most of his opportunities. But trust me, Joe, I, I've really never felt this season at all where Joe's just forcing a ball um, to a particular receiver because he wants to get a guy going or <laughs> got all sorts of issues going here. Uh, trying to force guys' balls because we just got a tremendous group of receivers and Joe just trusts whoever's on the field is going to get open and make the play. When things get close and tight, can you just describe the impact of having Joe Burrow in that moment? Well, we've got all the faith in the world in Joe. So there, there's never any panic on our end. You know, had we been down seven at the end of the game, had they scored there to tie it and we had to go kick a field goal to win it, um, I, I promise you my heart rate was, was as even as it could be just because I trusted our players and I knew that someone was going to step up and win that game for us. And and wasn't surprised when it happened. What did you think of the throw where he, he threw the touchdown to, to Tyler, really jumping out of bounds? I mean, he was within a half an inch of going out of bounds, uh, just a play he made on that one. Yeah, that's what you expect from the number one pick in the draft, is uh, plays like that, plays you can't explain, making a play when there's no play to be made. That's a phrase I've, I've heard often in my career. And Joe Burrow's the kind of guy that can make those types of plays. and. Um, it's pretty impressive. Zach, did you hear? Did you hear a whistle on that play? Because it's been talked about. I definitely, definitely never heard a whistle. No way. <laughs> I know. Uh, we've talked about it uh, plenty in the past, though. So Joe throwing the ball away. Are right, you thinking that in those moments? Did you think that in that moment? I, I think I've I've just learned. You know, I I've, I I thought that a lot last year. Um, there's probably been moments this year, but but the more I've been around him, I've just learned to just shut my mouth and and let the magic go to work. Yeah, really proud. You know, you lost Mike Hilton there for a couple of plays, and, and uh, we lost Mike Daniels on the first drive of the game. And so the, the stress of just having two D tackles really when Larry went down is is difficult. And so just really proud of, of you know, in that case, DJ and, and BJ doing a great job holding the fort down and, and two well-conditioned guys that just go out there and do their job and uh, the, the guys kind of rallying around them and picking them up. On your main practice, hey, what defense were you playing and what package were you using? Three, just our, our bread and butter coverage. I won't get into the exact call, but um, it's what we hang our hat on. It's what we've probably rep more times than anything else, and Jermaine made the play. How much have you seen Jermaine progress in pass coverage during his career? I, I think Jermaine um, has made a really big step this year. I, I thought last year um, was a good step in year two for him. I think this year he's made a tremendous jump and uh, super reliable for us and uh, just as consistent as there is. Zach, is there anything that over the course of the season that occurred that maybe helped you? Get this win out today. Well, it feels like we played in a lot of tight games at the end. Win, win or lose, you know, it, it's difficult to get them all. Uh, but the 49ers game, the Broncos game, th this kind of felt similar to the Broncos game, right, where we had to punt the ball back and we needed to stop. Now, we got it quickly in the Broncos game. This one took a little bit longer. But I, I just think playing in all these meaningful, tight December and January games, it pays off for us at this point. Red zone today, um, 40% conversion rate. 
yeah. on in red zone? Was that was there a consistent issue? Were there different things? What went on? Oh, it was tough. You know, it's um, it, it was just tough. Tough for, for me to find a rhythm there, to be quite honest with you, to get us into the best stuff. And, um, you know, disappointing because we, we scored on our first five drives of the game. But, but like you said, it didn't feel like we had enough points on the board. Um, and and I, I just put that on more on me, just just finding a better rhythm there in, in the low red zone. On that fourth and short before you kicked the field goal to make 26 16, did you, were you thinking at all about going forward or just trying to get them to, to jump in? Only if we had the right look. You know, and that, I just put that on Joe, and, and uh, it wasn't the right look, so he banged the timeout. You mentioned being so calm, uh, especially you know giving them the ball back after you had the point. What, what, what is it about your team? What is it about you as a coach that make you feel confident about your team in that position? Just have too many, too many tremendous players, and, and these guys play so well together um, that you're not worried about guys making busts and big play. I mean, they're going to make big plays. They got great players, but um, just feel like our guys understood the moment and they were going to bow up and make the plays we needed, and that gives me a lot of comfort. Coach, are you getting the game balls? Yeah, sure did. Um, you know, we gave two game balls. Uh, the first one is to, to Mike Brown, you know, just because um, there's nobody who's, who's more passionate about this team, this organization. There's no owner that, that sits at every walkthrough and every single practice in the freezing cold, the rain, the snow. Um, this means the world to him. And um, I, I think, you know, some of the players know him better than others, the coaches, myself. Um, we just owe so much to that man for being patient with us. I, I personally, um, if I coached at any other organization in football, I probably wouldn't be here right now in the third year. That's the truth. Uh, but he's just, he's got the experience and the understanding. And because he's around and because Paul and Katie and Troy and Caroline and Elizabeth, they care so much and they're around that they get a chance to hear your vision firsthand on a daily basis. So we're all on the same page. There's no miscommunication. They can see where we need to go. Um, and we're going to get there. And, and I think that they just believe in, in these players and coaches. And um, so he was very deserving of that. The second one is, is to the city of Cincinnati. You know, we want to start new traditions here with playoff wins where we give game balls to this city and let the fans enjoy it, take selfies with it, whatever it is. We'll figure out how we're going to do that, disperse these things around um, where people are at their, their greatest moments tonight and get a chance to enjoy these, these balls with us because – um, and I, I told this to the players. Some of them may not understand the significance of what happened today. Uh, but I know a lot of you in the room who are homegrown Cincinnatians certainly do. And, and uh, like I said earlier, I think this, this city can finally exhale and just enjoy this team for what it is and take that pressure off those, those last 31 years. And um, at, at the same time, there, there's just such an incredible history here at Cincinnati. Uh, there's Super Bowl appearances. There's, there's conference championships. Um, and, and really, these last even two decades, there's been so many tremendous players, teams, and coaches that have come through here that, that I hope that they feel like they're a part of this win today and they can enjoy this because they've really allowed the foundation for us to do this. And, um, you know, I, I think that's that today was significant for a lot of people. Zach, when you did come back for year three at, at the start of the season, did you feel like it was a – what did that build of confidence, I guess, come back do for you? And how do you feel like that kind of maybe helped enable – well, it doesn't change how we approach anything. You know, it's just, I think because we were all on the same page, we understood of what the approach was taking, what the pieces we needed, and, and we got to start winning some more games. And um, so, again, there wasn't any added pressure. We just kept it business as usual. And, and we've got the right team now to put us in a position to, to go, go into the second round as of now in the playoffs. Yeah, he, he stood out a lot to me. You know, he made, I think he made the big play on Renfro there on the third down where it got overturned. And um, I know he had a, a play in the fourth quarter there um, on the tight end, it looked like. So uh, you're right, better when I see the tape, but but certainly felt Jesse's presence today. Yeah, can you have any update on Larry Ogunjobi? I don't, you know, I, 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 I do not. I know you and Brian like to kind of mock how a game's going to play out, but when you sat down and kind of planned this one out, did, is that what you expected, that this would be on your defense at the end? And... I visualized kind of the, the score being like the 49ers, to be honest with you. Like if, if, you under, if you thought about how do I think this game's going to play, you're trying to picture calls late in the game. Um, I, I, whether we were up or down, I expected it to be up. But, but you envisioned it was going to be a tight game like that uh, just because of the style of defense they play. See, uh, whoever we played, Las Vegas. Um, compared, it was just very similar, I felt like. And it and, uh, wasn't going to surprise me if a game came down to a similar ending like that. So in a game like this in the playoffs, I'm 
sure you as a coach are going to tell the players for next week. A game like this with little things like Mike Hilton's play on the first drive of the series, of the first drive of the game, the um, uh, Jesse Bates play that you brought up on Red Pro, and Joe Mixon's second effort on the third down run. Those are three plays that stand out to me anyway. Are those kind of an example of how much little things matter in a game like there's, this? There's no question. Th this game, these, these games, the Kansas City game, we've preached about, and it's going to be like these games. It's going to come down to a foot. It's going to come down to a yard, an inch, however you want to phrase it. And, and that can mean a lot of different things. That can literally mean like Kansas City where it came down to the inch yard line, or it can mean um, a third and one that we did or didn't get, or the defense got to stop, or someone makes a big play that prevents four points. So um, that phrase means a lot of different things, but it just means these games are going to be tight, and every single play matters, and you got to be on top of the details. And, and I thought for the most part we were today. Not that you need a verification, but the fact that so many guys get picked up tonight to verify what you decided to do last week. Yeah, because I felt we were healthy going into the game, you know, and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens to some of these guys that were out, but, um, you know, felt like our guys were healthy and, and gave us a full four quarters there. Zach, what, about, what about this uh, performance makes you believe that you guys can enjoy the ride and maybe play a little bit longer this postseason? If we feel like we're on top of our game, we can beat any team in this league. We're not afraid of anybody. This team's got a ton of confidence. We always know it's going to be difficult. Whoever we play next, it's going to be a great team. Um, but but our guys don't worry about that. We, we feel like we can put pressure on teams as well. We can be aggressive. Teams have to worry about us also. And, and our, certainly our, our players really feel that and apply that. All right, Coach, okay, thank you all. Cincinnati, and what does this mean to you personally? Um, yeah, to me personally, you know, it means the world. And never in my lifetime have we had a playoff win. I um, feel like we broke a curse, but really just looking up at the stands, feeling the, the city come alive. Um, it's hard to put into words what it means to, to everybody in the city, and I'm just really happy to be a part of a team that was able to do it, and uh, we got a lot more in store. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a lot of guys go down on the defensive line, guys step up. We kind of just had to grind it out. We are trying to keep them in the pocket, um, you know, doubling guys in the back end, just grinding it out, keeping them out of the end zone, doing whatever we could. Uh, everybody was fighting, clawing together. I think the um, love we have as each other for teammates is what allowed us to bow up at the end and in the red zone so many times. How big did that uh, deflection feel? How, how big was that for you to like that, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. I was so tired at that point, but uh, I felt it hit my head. I didn't even know what down it was, but um, they kicked the field goal after it, I think, and I uh, just knew we got the ball back to our offense. Um, we had a chance. Sam, does it mean more to you that this game was decided uh, on the defense on your side of the ball? I don't really care. I was just all I wanted in the world was to win this game um, for the city, for this team, um, and we were able to do it. I didn't care how it happened. Sam, what was the call on that fourth down? The, you know, the last play of the game. What was the call? Uh, I don't. I can tell you. I don't want to talk too much scheme. We were just rushing. Um, yeah. I mean, so, it was, I don't get, I mean, it was one last shot. Right? Yeah. I mean, Jermaine Pratt has been preaching all year. He's our turnover guy every day in practice. Get the ball out. Get the ball out. So, to have him come up with the turnover, it's uh, it's no accident. After you got the call, does anyone say anything in the snap in the huddle before you go out for the snap for that fourth down, or do you just handle it like business? Uh, we all talk to each other, you know, different guys. Everyone's rallying together. Um, we got a bunch of great leaders on this defense, and um, you know, we say different things to each other, hold each other accountable. But we, uh, as a defense line, we were just trying to keep them in the pocket. Now that I'm scrambling, winning with his feet. And then do you remember anything about the celebration after practice? Like, what was, well, I guess, what were you doing? <laughs> I just walked off, looked in the crowd, saw everybody going nuts, and I uh, was a little bit overcome with emotion. How okay, gas were you guys? I mean, you were, you were down to, you guys were on fumes. I mean, you didn't have anybody. How, how tough was it down the stretch? Yeah, it was tough. I didn't. I don't think I got a sub the whole second half. Right. Uh, just grinding it out. Um, guys stepping up, Khalid Kareem, um, Camp Sample. Camp Sample playing D-tackle, I mean, just doing whatever we can to get the win. It was just an all-out effort, team effort. 
Sam, can you describe the locker room right now? I think you can hear it. Uh, it's a good place to be. I'm ready to get done with these questions so I can go celebrate with them. <laughs> All right, thank you. Guys. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello? How did it feel to deliver something to Cincinnati that they haven't felt in 31 years? Yeah, I felt good. You know, we could have played better on offense in the second half. Um, so that was disappointing, but I thought we played really well in the first half. And, you know, made plays when we needed to. Defense stepped up in the fourth quarter. Um, so it's a, an exciting win. We're on to the next one. On the touchdown pass to Tyler Boyd, the big deal that's going around is whistle blew. Did you hear any kind of whistle or anything when you delivered that ball? No, I didn't hear any whistle. In the fourth quarter, there was that point where you needed a drive. Just what was the sense in the huddle and on the field in that really huge moment? You know, the, the, whole, the whole second half, we, we knew we needed to put points on the board, and we, we kept kicking field goals instead of scoring touchdowns, and, and that was disappointing, but we were moving the ball and, and getting points, so uh, can't be too mad about it, but obviously we could have executed better. Joe, what did, what, like, just walk us through that touchdown play where uh, they dropped eight, and so, and they kind of had a, a spy on me, so I knew I could sit back in the pocket a little bit and found a little escape route. And you know, I was telling the guys all week that the big plays would come in, in scramble situations because they're so good at, at limiting the big plays, and, and kind of turned out right in that situation. You feel like that was that was kind of the, the catalyst for the win, or was it the cushion that y'all needed in the second half to play the rest of the game? Yeah, I think it was a, a big play in the game. Uh, a big turning point, but you know, there's still a lot of football left after that. Joe, well, you told us that you heard uh, from friends growing up and everyone else where you grew up that the Bengals had won a playoff game to do the history. Is this any extra meaningful for you to win this one tonight because of that? Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for for the city, for the state, but you know, we're we're not going to dwell on that. We're moving forward. We're ready. Whoever we got to play next, we'll be ready to to go out and execute the game plan. Joe, so that last drive, I feel with that last field goal drive, third and seven, you hit your man. It looked like that was just kind of a back shoulder. Can you kind of run us through that third and seven there? What, uh, what you saw, what you did? Yeah, Jamar did a great job with the line, creating some separation, and, and I, I had somewhere to put it on the on the back shoulder, and we've we've hit those all year, and so that was uh, you know, a big play in the game. Joe, what makes you so confident on third down with the weapons you have? You know, I think we have a great plan. Coming in, you know, I have I have answers on on every play. The coaching staff does a great job with the with the third down game plan, and then, you know, on third down, lots of teams like to play man and go one on one. And I mean, everyone knows the kind of guys that we have on on the outside, so you know, it's a it's a tough position to put defenses in. Did you have Gus Bradley do anything differently that you didn't anticipate? Was there a lot of adjustments to adjustments, or did it unfold pretty much like you thought you'd see? Uh, they disguised. Their, their stuff a little bit more. You know, they still played their stuff, but they, they just disguised it a little differently. But, you know, that, that defense is going to play their stuff.
Joe, does it mean anything to you to get a, get a playoff win in your first playoff start? I mean, it's exciting, but you know, it's this is expected. You know, I wasn't. This isn't like the the icing on top of the cake or anything. This is the this is the cake, and so we're we're moving on. What does it mean to you to be the youngest quarterback in franchise history to win a playoff game? You know, it's it's exciting, but we have we have a great team and great coaching staff. And like I said, we're we're on, we're on to the next week. It's going to be fun tomorrow to to watch the games, knowing we we have the win. You know, I, I was glad we were the the first game, so we could get it out of the way and and watch these games and and watch watch the film tomorrow and get back to work. What's that final drive like for you, where you're just an observer and you're watching the defense? It's it's, it's out of your hands. Is it, is it difficult? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I was <laughs> uh, I was kind of hoping they would just go down and score so I could get it back, uh, <laughs> but. I'm glad the defense made a play. Kind of a similar question. What was your perspective? Where were you standing? What was your reaction to Jermaine Pratt's pick at the end? You know, I was standing on the sideline. I'm usually sitting down, but I figured I should probably stand up for that one. Fourth and nine. You know, that guy's played un- unbelievable all year. I mean, I'm excited for him to be able to make a play in that situation. Joe, until the Kansas City game, y'all had never come back from a fourth quarter deficit. Do you feel like having won a game like that, where you had so many deficits and you had to come back, helped you in a day like today? It was tight. No, we've we've gone through adversity all year. You know, it's we've had some some pretty big deficits all season, um, and we've been second a second half team all year. And you know, I, we talk about it when when we go down. I mean, we don't really feel we never feel like we're out of it. I mean, team could be up twenty eight points and. You know, I feel like we can always come back with the weapons that we have on the outside and, and Joe Mixon and, and our coaching staff. So, uh, you know, I never feel out of it. On the red zone trips that were just field goals, that wasn't like overly aggravating you or making you nervous? Yeah, it was frustrating. You know, you want to go and, and punch that in and get those touchdowns. But, you know, we knew we had we had control of the game and we just needed to put points on the board. And, you know, we, had, we were moving the ball really well. We just couldn't quite get over that hump in the second half and punch it into the end zone. I know there were two drives uh, or a couple of drives where you just settled for field goals, but two drives where you responded and got touchdowns. Can you talk about the first drive of the game after they took the 3 nothing lead and the drive before halftime? Yeah, the, the first one was, you know, a big, big drive. I think, you know, that really set the tone for the rest of the game. You know, we kind of moved it up and down on them and you know, we were feeling comfortable. I was feeling really comfortable in the pocket. O line did a great job all day. You know, that's a really, really good D line that you know you have to go on block. And you know, I think they did really well. Um, you know, we got to a, a third down, and CJ made a great play on that first drive. You know, you're obviously very businesslike after a win like this. Um, is there a celebration? Do you allow yourself to celebrate this, or is it straight to work on the next game? Straight to work. Obviously, we're excited about the win, but you know, this is the playoffs. You. If you dwell on, on this one too much, you're going to get beaten in the next round. Were you surprised at how the Raiders played Jamar, and what did you think of his performance with over uh, 100 receiving yards again? Yeah, yeah, he played great, like he always does. Uh, and we just the key the key with him is you know you don't you don't get a lot of one on one opportunities throughout the game, but when you do, you gotta you gotta capitalize on them. And I think he capitalized on them really well. You played first a lot. Touchdown, the first touchdown pass, Joe. I mean, there were three guys right there. Rifled that into CJ. Was that a play where your increased arm strength that you worked on in the offseason paid dividends? Could be, could be. Um, I think timing was the the bigger the bigger point of emphasis on that on that throw. You know, it was. I felt like I put it in a good spot and, and threw it right out of the break. And CJ did a great job of reading the coverage and, and understanding that he was open. He doesn't need to go anywhere. Just turn around and he's gonna he's gonna get the ball. Zach said it feels like y'all can hang with anybody that y'all play the rest of the postseason. How long has that feeling felt in y'all? And what's, this, what's the source of that confidence? Yeah, I mean, we expect to beat everybody that we play, not just hang with them. Uh, you know, the guys we have in that locker room, we know the kind of players we have and, and the coaches, and, and we have a great game plan every week. So, you know, this is the playoffs. Every game is going to be tight. You so, uh, on the touchdown to Tyler Boyd, did you hear the whistle? I did not. I did not. How long was it out there, uh, Joe? How how long was it? You know, like a fourth down snap or fourth Pratt's play. You know, it's tough for me to it's tough for me to say. I'm not really keyed into the crowd noise too much. I'm more focused on on my job, um, and so I'm I'm pretty good at, at tuning that out, and I think that helps me. And so that's a a tough question to answer. But you know, I know they had a lot of false starts, so it must have been pretty loud. 
playing a ton of big games in your life. How, what were the similarities and what were the differences of an NFL playoff game? You know, we knew it was going to be tough. You know, that's a, a really good team, really good defense. Um, you know, tough, physical. And, you know, we knew it was going to come down to the last drive in the in the fourth quarter. That's how most playoff games do come out. And, you know, we've, we've played in a lot of big games this year. And so that, that situation wasn't anything new to us. Zach said that uh, the fourth and the foot, you said, you know, I put it in Joe's hands. If he got the look he wanted, going to do whatever, and you didn't get it. Do you want to go for it, even after the timeout, go for that fourth and the foot, or were you okay with the field goal? No, that's not my decision. I thought we, I thought it was a good decision. You know, we take the points, go up two scores in the fourth quarter, and you know our defense is playing really well. So, you know, let them, let them handle it. Let's take our points and, and move on. How close did the look come? I mean, were you close to getting the look you were looking for? Yeah, we were close. Yeah, I wanted to, wanted to get it, but you know, I think sometimes. Is there a significance in, to the shade? Hold on one sec. You know, I think sometimes being patient in that kind of situation it, it enables you to to win that game, and so I'm I'm glad that I didn't snap it. Is there a significance to the glasses? Oh no, uh, I just think they're pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> sunglasses? No, I wouldn't call them sunglasses. <laughs> just how, ten how many text messages do you expect to be on your phone about y'all winning the playoff game? Oh, who knows? Probably a couple hundred. I haven't checked it yet. Um, but we'll see. So you're going to start preparing right away, but you, you're not going to know for 27 hours who you're playing. What what does that preparation look like until you know who's just, next? Just watching football on TV, you know, go in and get, get our workouts, watch the film tomorrow, and then, you know, be a fan for the rest of the day and see, see who we're playing. Last one. Joe, do you think by not playing up in Cleveland that you performed better this week than you would have if you had to play up in Cleveland? I mean, it's tough to say. You know, I know my body felt really good. You know, I think we all felt fresh coming into this game, and you know, we had a great week of practice, and everyone was was healthy coming into the game. You know, and we got some injuries, you know, in this game. People people banged up, but I think everyone was fresh. All right, thanks, Joe. Thanks. Appreciate it. Jermaine, Thank you. next. Man, just walk, walk us through what you saw in that last play and kind of what led to the interception. Um, they did the same play again, the one Jesse almost picked. So they, so it was the same read for me. I read the quarterback eyes and he threw it. He tried to make a play and I took advantage of the opportunity. What was your assignment on that play? Um, hook the hook, like reading the quarterback eyes, basically. This in cover three. This inside help present for the slant or anything that's coming in. Is, is a PBU there just as good as an interception, or does it mean more to you to actually pick the ball? I mean, pick. A pass I breakup. I, mean, I know, I say pick. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. why, why, why is that so mean? Because either way you're getting the ball back, why is that so much more important? What do you mean, why? You want to turn over. <laughs> Turnovers win games. I want to pick. I don't want no PBU. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been doing this all year. You've been talking about getting the ball out, getting the ball out. I mean, you've been talking about it all year. What uh, what did you see on that last play that allowed you to do that? What was the, what did the car show you there? I mean, like I said, like he did the same play previous, the one Jesse almost picked. Well, a great play by Jesse getting that PBU, but then he tried to do the same thing, so I took advantage of the opportunity. Von Bell says you wake up thinking about the ball. I mean, that's your mindset, I guess. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the mindset you should have. Like turnovers win games. Like if we. If we don't turn over the ball, we have a better chance of winning. If you get the ball, more opportunities for Joe Burrow and them to score. Did you feel Eli Apple with the leverage that he had? I mean, you guys had leverage like advice. Did you realize that he was that tight on the backside of it? Um, no, I didn't know, but I know I'm inside, help present for either one of them coming inside. So I, I did my job right there. I'm sure if, if you guys were down, you would feel confident with Joe Burrow and the ball with the ball in his hands. But how much did you relish the fact of being up and, and the game kind of hinging and being on the defensive shoulders? I mean, I think that's a defensive player mindset. They want to be on the ball. I mean, be in the game the last drive. want to close it out for them. You know, that's my mindset. And I'm pretty sure Joey B probably say, I want to go there and put the ball in his hands. Like he always say, put the ball in his hand, you'll make a play. Two minutes. Zach was talking about some, some big strides you made in pass coverage specifically. How did you make such big strides over the last year in particular in pass coverage? I mean, it's understanding concepts and how they're attacking us. You know what I mean? Using your help and stuff. This understanding of football, you know, developing. Over time, you got to develop as a player or you'll get left behind. 
So I think every approach of your game, you got to improve each every moment. That's, that's the clinching play and the win that ends this long playoff drought for the franchise. It's going to get replayed over and over again. This is going to go down as a memorable play in Bengals history. What does that mean to you? It means a lot, you know. Um, I got drafted by Zach. You know, we had ups and downs for the past two years, and be able to make that play, you know, put a stamp of his the first class he drafted ever here at the Bengals. So it was, it was a great opportunity. I saw you kept the ball over the locker. Do you have any plans on what you want to do with it yet? Uh, nah, I'm on the next week. That's my mindset. I know we can't. We we're not stopping. We just that's one game. We on to the next week. That's my mindset. But are you, you going to do anything with the ball that you? I mean, I'm going to put it up. I want another ball. I, that, I, the next one is the best one. All right, Jermaine, we'll let you go. Thank you. Appreciate oh, it. Sure. CJ Uzama's nuts. Thank you. 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 Chill, I'm not that old. Uh, no, nah, it feels great, man. Uh, I was kind of overcome with a little bit of emotion after the game. It's awesome. Um, you know, this is what you work for, right? And and for it to be this this long and this this hard and and it's just been a long time coming. So um, I'm hype. I, I know the team's hype, and, and you know I, I heard Jermaine say that's just one. Um, we're, we're 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 trying to run the table. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when I see when I see someone like him or see, you know, other tight ends around the league, obviously, you know, making catches, I'm like, dang, you know, I, I want to be able to contribute in that aspect. But at the same time, I'm I'm looking around at Jamar and T and TB and Joe Mixon and all, all the weapons we have, and I'm like, yo, look, if I have to block every single play and these dudes are going to get open and have career days, I will do it. So um, it, it's, it's nice to have a little bit of a change up and be able to contribute in the pass game for sure. Um, I mean, Joe threw a dot, and that's – I mean, that was an incredible throw. I was like, dang, all right, bro. This, this is what we're doing today? Um, but, yeah, it definitely – it definitely – you know, it, it gives you a little – you have a little chip on your shoulder for sure. Did his presence or his – what he was saying, did that change at all because it was the playoffs or was he the exact same? Oh, no, I mean, he was the same. You know, he had same stoic expression the entire time. So, yeah, he, 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 he had, the, had that level head. And CJ, you were walking off the field with Joe Mixon, and he kept saying in the most Joe Mixon way, you know, it's our time, it's our time, how he does, and obviously very vocal about that. How confident are you that this team, this is your time to do something special in this playoffs? Yeah, I mean, very confident. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, to be completely honest, I think, you know, we, we got a little tense as an offense um, in the second half. You know, I think we were kind of, you know, we weren't playing within ourselves and we were making a little bit, you know, some, some mistakes that we shouldn't be making and um, doing things that, you know, that were a little uncharacteristic. And I think, you know, this win was just, ooh, you know, you got that you got that monkey off your back. And um, now we can play loose. So I, I think it is our time. You know, why not? Why not go out there and make a run and, and win the whole thing? So, yeah, I'm, I'm hype you said that. What was your... Following up on that dot that Joe threw, there were three guys right around you on that play. Are you, oh, you're talking about the tutty? Yeah. Touchdown? Sorry. Touchdown? Oh, yeah, 100%. Right when, right, when, right when I broke the huddle and I saw the coverage, I knew it was coming to me. Um, and I knew I, I knew he was going to throw it, and I just had to hang on. Um, so, yeah, I, right when I turned, I saw his eyes, and I was like, yep. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> Let's go. What was your assessment of the significance of your jersey? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if, how, how much you guys know, but in our team, <laughs> bro, come on, bro. Uh, this dude, Jamal, he can't be in here. No, nah, he can't be in here. This guy's a clown. Um, <laughs> I love him so much. Um, in our team meeting room, we have, we have uh, pro bowlers on the wall, and I've seen his name. Um, I've seen Rodney Holman's name, uh, uh, you know, since, since I've been here for seven years, and um, I did kind of some research. I know that he was the last tight end that won a playoff game, went to the Super Bowl with, with, with the Bengals, and I thought it'd be, you know, kind of a nice tribute to um, things to come and, you know, kind of, again, just kind of pay homage and say, hey, you know, this is, this is kind of how it's going to be. We're going we're gonna to run the table and, and win the whole thing. 
I believe, you, I believe you performed the first ever icky gritty. Can you walk us through the creation of that and how you thought the execution went? <laughs> execution? Zero. No, I don't know. Um, don't, uh, what do I avoid? Dalton Knox or Dawson Knox <laughs> hit me up and I was like, man, nice tutty, but that gritty was uh um well I knew that Icky Woods would be uh the ruler of the jungle and I was like, oh nice, I'll just I'll just do the Icky Shuffle. Um and I was talking to I was talking to one of my boys and I was like, yo, if I score, I'm gonna do the the Icky into the gritty. And he said, Not if, when and I was like, All right, bet. Um I probably should have practiced for sure, cause I <laughs> that was that was not that was not well done. But hey, psh, the guy in the end zone, screw it. What was your angst level like watching that final drive from the sideline, watching the defense try to come and stop? Uh, I was mic'd up this game, and so I was talking a lot to myself. But like I kind of forgot. I was just like, I was saying some choice words. Um, but I, I mean. I kind of tried to just play play it even keel, you know, just in case they scored and 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 you know we'd have to go back out there and go to OT. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably why the emotions just kind of flew flew out of me at the end of the game when, when they did get that stop. Um, but yeah, it was definitely it was a roller coaster of emotions going on. CJ, after the stop, did you take any time to look up into the stands and look at what was going on around you guys after the? I did after after we took the knee. Um, right right away, I kind of just like dropped to a knee and just like punched the ground, like just happy. Um, and then after I took the knee, I mean, usually, you know, we're leaving, we're uh, we're walking off the field, and you know the the fans kind of clear out. Um, I looked up and I know we had sixty six thousand something in there. I bet there was still fifty thousand people. I know the top room was probably clean, cleared out, but. Man, it, it you could tell how much it meant, meant to this city for us to get that win, and, and um, yeah, it was that was awesome. That was an awesome experience. What was the sideline side like in the moment of your main press pick? Hype? Are you kidding me? We were so hype. We were going crazy out there. Stand out about that moment? Uh, again, not really, because I because I was just on I was on my knee. I, I wasn't. I was just. I had like a little moment to myself before I went out there. So um, nothing nothing of note kind of sticks out, but. Yeah, that was a hell of a play, huh? Um, I know that was the last question, but I want to say this because I didn't say it in the team room. Um, Coach Taylor and what that this whole staff has, has instilled in us and the culture that they brought in is so telling in everything that we've been doing. The, thing, the, the success that we have, um, obviously we're out there, we're the, we're the players, we're out there, we're executing and whatnot, but I, I really do want to say, um, you know, without him and without this staff and without their, them, you know, just us buying into to what he's kind of trying to, to build into this culture and into this organization. Um, I, I really appreciate him. Us as a team, we appreciate him and this coaching staff. And um, I know he didn't win coach of the year, but to us, he 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 deserves that and, and, and so much more. But because he didn't, we're just going to have to prove, prove it and win a Super Bowl. So thank you. Also, y'all about to talk to this dummy? Hey, dummy! Big, big dummy! Good luck with this guy, okay? Ask him, ask him how to say Wembley. Wembley. I love you! Get out of here. It felt good to get the job done, you know. Um, glad we got this 31-year streak over with, so it's a blessing. Demar, did they play you differently than they did the, the first time around? No. We just didn't take advantage of it the first time. Demar, when you're going up against guys that you may feel that <clears throat> can't stop you, can't guard you, what is it about you that kind of just makes you – Want to show everybody that you're the, you're, you know, you're alpha receiver out there. Um, I really like that every game. It don't matter who is across from me. You know, I'm, I'm, I got that dog mentality. Um, it's either be stopped or not be stopped. So, you know, I don't think I can't be stopped. How similar or how different was Joe today compared to Joe in the 2019 playoff run? <laughs> I wish I had good enough memory to go back that far. Um, Joe did his, he did good today. You know, passes are always on point. You know. Um, 
<clears throat> I mean, he's playing tremendous football. I don't think, you know, he's playing any different than what he has been playing. You know, he's just getting smarter as the game goes on. How fast did you fly off the sideline after Pratt's pick? I didn't fly off the sideline. I was, I was a little happy. Um, I wasn't satisfied, but I was happy. I was happy we got the win. You know, it was an ugly win. I felt like, but got the job done. Have you, have you been playing with the girls in all year? I have, yes, yes. Some games, not every game. Did you play with them in this game? Yeah. Why, why'd you, so what goes into the decision when you play with them in or out? If I'm feeling it, really. Last game I got hit, so too hard, and I bit my t <laughs> my lip, so I took it out. Now I'm going to just wear it again, so I might wear them next game. You feel like this team's got a lot of confidence in Right now. So, where did that come from at one point in the season? Um, <clears throat> I'll probably say if, if we do, like if, if any of that happened, uh, I'll probably say the Kansas City game. You know what I'm saying? That was probably the biggest challenge we had all year. Um, and we stepped up that game. You know, we needed to win that game. We needed to win that game. We stepped up that game, executed. And, you know, that's probably where we got our, our confidence higher from. Of course not. Um, I mean, Cloud is a bit of a slowdown I could get, maybe a little double double. Um, but in the majority of the time, you, you got to win a one on one matchup. You know, that's been taught day one at LSU. Mario, uh, CJ said the offense didn't really play to its true identity most of the second half, maybe tightened up a bit. Mm -hmm. But this feels like a get the monkey off your shoulders and play loose kind of win from here on out. Do you agree with that? Do you feel that in the second half? I do agree with that, yeah, definitely. Going forward for this team, when you said, you play loose, you can beat anybody. Zach is saying the same thing. What is your confidence level on this team when Joe Mixon says it's our time to do something special now? Yeah, um, my confidence is pretty high, you know. You know, being next to Joe Burrow, you know, Mix, TB, you know, those guys are always pumped up, ready to go calm. Um, but <clears throat> I just try to stay as calm as I can, you know, so I can, you know, not overthink anything while the game's going on. You know, I just try to play my game. You look like they came out of the gate just playing you one on one that first drive. Yeah. Did they change after that? Um, the only time they changed when I got to the three by two set, I want to say, I was number three. Um, <clears throat> in the empty formation, I was number three. So that was the only time they changed. They put their uh, defense and got into too high on me. Joe mentioned that they uh, disguised <clears throat> coverages a little bit. They they pretty much did the same thing, but made it look a little bit a little bit different. How long did it take you to to diagnose what they were trying to do? Did you pick up pretty quickly? Yeah, I picked it up pretty quickly. Um, they didn't really try to disguise as much to my side. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a little easier for me to read. Can you describe what that's like, what the emotions are like and it, as the, the Raiders are driving out at the end? It's out of your hands. You just have to sit there and watch your defense. Yeah, uh, in that moment, you got <clears throat> you got to sit there, believe in your defense, you know, execute. Hopefully they execute. Um, you know, cheer them on. That's all. That's the best thing you can do right there, and watch the game play itself. So that's all I was doing, standing up watching the game. I was a little nervous when they got close to the goal line, though. So Jermaine saved us. Jamar, isn't that a big deal though in the postseason to know that maybe the offense isn't clicking on all cylinders, especially in the red red zone, to have your defense step forward and win a playoff? Mm -hmm. uh, that? that was big, of course. You know, that means our defense is ready to play football. You know, they've been showing it every week in and week out. Um, and our offense got to be, you know, better in some of those positions, and we got to score. On TV's touchdown, was it confusing out there? Did you hear a whistle? Did you know what was happening? No, nah, I didn't even know TB caught the ball. I just seen him put the ball in there. You know, once they ca once they caught touchdown, I was ready to celebrate. So, how would you describe your relationship with Burrow? Like, how is that? How is, how is that progressed throughout the course of the year, and how is that translated to what y'all are able to do on the field? Yeah, uh, me and him started clicking since college. So you know, we just getting smarter, helping each other get smarter, and you know, getting better as the game goes on as we get older. The third and seven there, the last drive, you get the last field goal, you went up ten. Uh, did you uh, that third and seven look like a back shoulder? Or, I mean, was that was that the way it was drawn up? Was that the play? Um, no, I had a go route. You know, Joe threw a back shoulder, slowed me down, and I adjusted. How many times do you think you've done that? Probably a thousand plus. So we did it in college multiple times. Why? Why have you guys been able to click like you have, not just on the field, off the field? 
Um, <clears throat> college, I want to say, you know, college is where you had one of the most fun times where you get to meet people you, you know what I'm saying, grow up with and meet for a lifetime. You know, I met Joe at college, I'm meeting for a lifetime now. So, um, it's looking like my brother now. So, you know, he's helping me grow, I'm helping him grow, getting each other better, getting the organization better, team better. Everyone's getting better around us. Mar, you mentioned he's like a brother to you. Uh, he said he wears those glasses he was wearing because he says they're cool. <laughs> glasses. Uh, really you, you said I'm cool with that? No, I mean, do you agree? Are they, are they cool glasses? Nah, they, they're nice. Cartier's, I think. They look real good. Shit. I wear them. Do you help him with this style at all? Is it all nah. Good? No. We're going to get him on that, though. We're going to get him. How do you like running the ball? I mean, you got a few touches carrying the football. What do you think about that? I haven't played running back in a long time, but, you know, they're giving me those tosses, getting my speed to the outside. I'm getting hit by linebackers, so I'm knowing how hits feel again. But, you know, it's cool, as long as I can make a play with the ball in my hands. Did they install that stuff in OTAs, or has that popped up during the season? Through the season. Have you noticed, like, it seems like that's one of the trends of the year, guys like Debo. Have, do you see yourself fitting into that trend, the receivers carrying the ball? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm built like a running back. You know, they, do, they only do it for receivers who built like running backs, so I can see myself doing it. Two yeah, you know, the fourth and one, when he gave it to you on the fourth and one, jet sweep? Yeah. Uh, was that, was, that was fourth and one? Yeah. Did he check for that? No. That was already already a play coming out the huddle. Mm hmm Any more? What are you going to do to celebrate this play? Get back healthy. That's what I'm going to do. I'm a little bugged up, but I'm good. I'm still walking, so I'm just getting some treatment in the morning. I ain't doing nothing. Your toe, your ankle. You said my what? Your toe, your I can't ankle. tell you that. <laughs> Almost got me. Today. Almost got me. Ain't nothing happened. I'm just got hit by linebackers. I told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.